So what I want to see today, first of all, uh, the objective, want to look at the triggers, the different triggers that we have, normal, external software, external hardware trigger, external synchronization trigger, and the quasi-external hardware trigger. So what is the objective? To just give you a, 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 like an easy overview on the different triggers that we have that our spectrometer. Uh, a trigger, <laughs> as the thing say, is uh, an event outside the system, which in this case our spectrometer is going to make it to do something. Either a push button, a level activation, a laser pulse, uh, you know, whatever is sent to the spectrum to tell you, wake up. Okay, that is what you have to So that's what the trigger does. And uh, the triggers that we have, as we mentioned, we have normal mode, software trigger mode, external hardware trigger, and external synchronization trigger, and external quasi trigger mode. This is like a little asterisk. So, first of all, oh, sorry, what is normal mode? Normal mode is when you plug the spectrometer and you open the spectrum suite, the spectrometer is just running like crazy in the background. It's just acquiring the spectra like nothing. We call it free running mode. It's just acquiring any spectra that comes, how long it takes, as long as your integration time. So you have five seconds, it's going to be acquiring every five seconds, and it's going to give you a new acquisition every five seconds. Okay? That's every time you open the spectrum suite or of the driver, that's what it does. Then, the next one that we have, the next trigger mode that we have is called external support trigger. So what is external support trigger does? It is a little bit confusing because the software, um, it seems to be that you are triggering the spectrometer with the software, which is not what is happening. You actually need to provide a 5 volt TTL signal into your, your spectrometer. Uh, like the USB 4000 has 22 pin, the HF 4000, or the HF families, they have like 32. The uh, USB 2000, the old ones, they had 10. But one of those pins is your external trigger input, your external trigger pin. Okay? So the software trigger, uh, this one is a level trigger. As long as you provide 5 volts, it's going to, to keep acquiring or updating the spectrum. The, 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 the screen is all it is doing. In the background, the spectrometer is running like crazy. It's running in free, nor, in free, nor, uh, nor, free running mode. It's just acquiring in the background, like whatever integration time you set in software is doing that. You send the TTL signal, the five volts, is going to then update the screen with the current acquisition and put it in the spectrum suite. So you don't need to sync it. You don't need, this is not like a synchronization. This is more like Every time I send you five volts, update the screen. That's all it is doing. Okay? Here's a little animation that can kind of made to, to, to make it easy to understand. So uh, that's my integration flow. Every time you see it here, up here, it's acquiring a new spectrum. You see it down here, it's not doing anything. Okay? So yeah, this is my trigger signal. So if I don't send anything, the software will not do anything. It's going to be completely there doing nothing. Okay? I send a TTL pulse, so I think I go from 0 to 5 volts now, 5 volts. Then, what happened with the spectrum suite? It updates itself. But you can see here, I'm sending the, the beginning of my 5 volt, of my 5 volt signal starts here. And then it dies or it stops in here. Well, how many spectra do you think it's going to give me? One. one. Two. It's going to give me this one, and it's going to give me this one. Okay? <coughs> Let me run it again, so you see it kind of faster, goes, goes up, updates, then after that, goes down, and it disappears. Stops updating the screen, okay? So let's go to the next one. External hardware trigger. An external hardware trigger, this is an actual real trigger. In this mode, the spectrometer is completely, completely frozen. It's not reading anything. It's just there waiting for you to send the TTL signal, okay? so it's, if you want to do leaps, for example, or you want to do something very, require very timing acquisition, you use this mode. Okay. So uh, every time this is this is rising age. So every time you send a transition from zero to five volts, it's then going to acquire a new spectra. If you need a hundred acquisitions, you need to send a hundred of those. Okay. And it's going to do it as long as integration time. So here is an example. Here is my 
integration clock is not acquiring any spectra, it's just there waiting something to happen. I send my trigger pulse, a boom, a new acquisition happens. Then it's going to go back and ask again, are you sending me another uh, trigger? Do you have another 0 to 5 volt transition? <coughs> no? Okay, then I want to just continue being in standby mode. Okay, finally, you send me a new pulse. I want to wake up, do my integration time, update my spectra suite right here, and then just go back to standby mode. But what happens if I send, during this acquisition, if I send a trigger pulse, what is going to happen? Is it going to give me a new one, or is it going to ignore it? Ignore it's going to ignore it. Because it's going to ignore it. Until it's done with that acquisition, then it's going to be, OK, are you sending me a new one? No, OK, I want to just be there waiting to see if you send me one. The next one we have is called external synchronization trigger. External synchronization trigger is just like the external hardware trigger. The only difference is that the integration time is not set with software. The integration time, it will be the one of the frequency of your trigger pulse. So for example, if I send a, if I send a trigger signal of 100 milliseconds, my integration time will be 100 milliseconds. If I change this frequency to 50 milliseconds, my integration time will be 50, 50 milliseconds. And if I do that and I go to one second, what will be my integration time? One second. One second. Exactly. So that's this is the synchronization trigger. When do you do you use this? When you have like a like a chopper, for example, that's when you use it. Or when you have an unknown integration time. When you don't know the bend, you don't know what it's gonna be, you don't know how much you have to be reading, you use this thing. Because then it's gonna synchronize the frequency of the bend with your integration time. Okay, but it's just like the external hardware trigger. It requires a rising age signal. That means like if you need a zero to five volts to see it, but it will synchronize the integration time to the frequency of the trigger pulse. That clear? Does that make sense? Okay. So what it does, more or less, uh, here is my initial integration time. Let's say I have an integration time of 100 milliseconds. You see, and then I start sending my trigger pulses. Is going to, to use that pulse frequency now. And all the integration times will be of the new pulse frequency. You see, it's not, not, that, uh, it's not very clear, but what it should be happening, it should be a new trigger signal will be here. Tac, 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 you see that? So that's what happened. But you have the idea, no? That's specific for Maya. That's for uh, any, everything but the Maya. Right. Or any Hamamatsu, okay? Right. Now we move to the quasi external hardware trigger. <laughs> Why we did this? All the Hamamatsu detectors, the, the, the QE65000, the ENIR Quest, the Maya 2000, the Maya Pro, they do not have, the, the detectors do not have the feature of put them in, in standby mode or idle mode. They cannot, you cannot just tell them, don't do anything, just wait there. They can't. Because what does Hamamatsu make them? So what, what we have to do, we have to come with this quasi-external hardware trigger. So how this thing works? This thing works is that just like the external hardware trigger, the only difference is that you need to, we have to run the spectrometer at the minimum integration time. Okay? And this is transparent for the customer. You will not even see it. If you have a Maya, you put an external hardware trigger, it's going to be just in standby mode. But what is actually happening in the background, the man is reading at his minimum integration time. He's doing readings of six milliseconds, six milliseconds, six milliseconds, six milliseconds. You send your trigger signal, then it will change the integration time to the actually the one that you need, do the reading, and go back to six milliseconds, six milliseconds, six milliseconds, until you send, the, until you send your new detail signal. Okay, so let me hear this more, explain it. So the integration clock, when you look at the spectra, so it's not being updated. It's frozen. Doesn't know it's happening, nothing. But the actual integration time is the minimum. For example, the Q60 for the Maya. Six milliseconds, six milliseconds, six milliseconds, six milliseconds, six milliseconds, six milliseconds. It's going to be doing that until you send your TTL signal. Send your TTL signal, my trigger input, zero to five volts. It will then change to the actual integration time that I require, that I send in software. Let's say that I enter. 100 milliseconds here, so then that one will be 100 milliseconds. It's going to do the scan, one update spectral suite, and I'm going to continue to 
8 milliseconds, 8 milliseconds, what did you send to your new trigger? Then it's going to do the new reading with 100 milliseconds. But what is the downfall? What is the problem with this? That you have an uncertainty of 6 milliseconds. If I, send my, so if I send my trigger, <coughs> if I get to send my trigger at uh, uh, more or less, you don't see very well, but if you, you see that I send in the trigger almost at the beginning of this one. Yeah, with a slight of So it has to wait 6 milliseconds until it finally changes and does the reading of the one that you need. Yeah. So for someone who's doing read, for example, it's not going to work. So this one will disappear. I am showing this one because there's still maybe, I don't know, you know, 10,000 units with this firmware. Yeah. In case you get to see it or you used to, you know, be aware of this, but it's going to disappear. It's going to be it's completely obsolete. It's not going to work anymore soon. Okay? Okay? So now you guys have to, you have, in front of you, you have some spectrometer, you have a fibers, you have a breaker box, you have a HR4000 spectrometer, you have a spectrum suite up and running, I hope, still. And then uh, you can change the the triggers here. If you don't mind, please change the external trigger to software, please. <laughs> well, actually, first, 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 grab the the, the, the the fiber, point it to the ceiling or the the, 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 the roof until you see a <laughs> you see some spectra. Wow. Okay. So what you have, so you have the breaker box here. Okay. The breaker box. Yeah. Continue, please. The breaker box. This thing is like an interface to to get to the 30, 33 pin connector on 32 pin connector on the HR pages. Okay? This thing just gives you nice feature, but the, what I'm using it here is for it has an external trigger button. If you push that button, it's the, it's the same as sending a trigger signal. But this is just like an internal trigger. It's just shorting a five volt to the trigger pin. So every time you push it, you're gonna get a new and you are gonna be triggering the spectrometer. And you will see an update. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do, we're going to do a high speed acquisition. For high speed acquisition, um, the cool thing about that is that you can tell it, I need 100 spectra. So please now, uh, well actually first, change the, the, the external trigger to normal. Okay, now please go to file, new, high speed acquisition. Okay, everybody's there? Go there. Okay, now click OK and then warning thing. Okay. okay, now change the integration time to the one that you that you saw it was good enough to give you a signal. Whatever you know. External trigger mode to software. Everybody's there? Yeah. Then uh, click on the three dots. You see the three dots? Click in there. And just put whatever name you want on the desktop. Put it on the desktop. And then click save. The number of scans, please enter a hundred. Enter a hundred and then click on go. Guess what's the question? I think that's it, guys. Any questions? Everything's good? It's good. So find something. It works. It works, right?